Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the troubleshooting of a natural gas or propane direct ignition gas valve. All right, so this is a 24 volt electrical gas valve that sends the full flow of gas through and it directly ignites the full gas flow. So in order for this to turn on, you have to go through the sequence of operations. So first things first, you end up having to have a call for heat at the thermostat, which means that R and W are touching. And then over here at the control board, the control board sees 24 volts on W and you can read it with your multimeter from W to common. After that, the sequence of operation starts. The inducer motor ends up turning on. And the second thing that happens is the pressure switch electrically closes, proving that the inducer motor is working and that there's no problem with the exhaust pipe or the condensate lines. After that, the hot surface igniter turns cherry red. Whether that's a 24 volt or whether that's a 120 volt hot surface igniter, that turns cherry red. And then you end up having the gas valve get powered with 24 volts. So if you do have a hot surface igniter turning cherry red, but you do not have gas flow, then what you need to do is you need to check your inlet gas pressure first. As well, you're going to end up checking your outlet gas pressure, and you're going to verify that you have 24 volts heading into the electrical gas valve. The 24 volts is only going to occur for likely about three seconds while this hot surface igniter is cherry red. So that's the time when you need to check for your 24 volts there. So if we wanted to read the resistance of this, just like we would read the resistance of another component, maybe the hot surface igniter or this pressure switch, uh, sometimes we can't actually get to the coil from the top right here. If we were to read resistance of this gas valve right here where the 24 volt connection comes into play, we're reading mega ohms. And that has to do with the board. There's actually a board uh, underneath here, and we're not actually reading the, the coil right here. We would like to read the coil uh, resistance value right here in ohms, but we can't get to it without popping this faceplate off. On some gas valves, you actually can check the resistance value. But on this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna read the inlet gas pressure right out of this cap right here. It's the easiest way to read the incoming gas pressure is to just have, say, a half inch cap already with a eighth inch uh, brass fitting attached to it. And then maybe also have a three quarter and maybe also a one inch in the truck that's already tapped with this barb fitting on it. Then what you do is you just end up taking the uh, cap off at the uh, drip tee and putting your cap on and then turning the gas valve back on in order to read your inlet gas pressure. Otherwise, the only way to read your inlet gas pressure is by taking this plug back here off. And that's going to be in a fairly hard spot inside of a furnace. So it's always best to do it on the drip tee outside of the furnace. We are, however, going to need to read this output gas pressure. So we are going to end up having to get in there and take our plug off with our service wrench. I then just disconnect it from my service wrench and do the rest by hand. Just like that. So obviously if you don't have any gas pressure coming in, that will be your problem right away. Uh, and then you just want to go ahead and find where the, uh, the gas valve is turned off at. But in this instance, we have this gas pressure coming in. So we definitely want to check on this side, see what's going on when we apply 24 volts to this. So then what we're going to do is we're going to hand tighten this in right over here. And if you need to, you could end up tightening it a little bit more with a pair of channel locks or a small adjustable wrench. And I'm going to stick my pressure tube right on there. So then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to wait for the sequence of operation to have the hot surface igniter turning cherry red and you want to read voltage over on those two terminals. At the same time, if you do have 24 volts here, you want to make sure that you're checking your outlet gas pressure. So we're turning our hot surface igniter on. So say it's the third step in the sequence of operation and we're getting ready to turn our gas valve on. And what's going to happen is we're going to read our gas pressure as the output gas pressure. Presently, we're on the input gas pressure reading P1. So let's go ahead and switch over to P2, and we're reading 3.16. That's very low for a propane flame. So we need to actually adjust that gas pressure up right here. So in this case, if propane on a single stage gas valve is calling for, say, 10 inch water column coming out, uh, and it only has 3 inch water column, then that could be the problem right there. 
So that could be that somebody did not convert this gas valve properly and they never adjusted the pressure to factory specs. So that could make a rough ignition. It may have just been rough igniting for a long period of time and then now it just won't ignite at all, but that's how you determine what the problem is. We also want to read our 24 volts. Make sure that you don't end up going from this ground onto uh, the hot wire. And we're going to read 25.9 volts heading into the gas valve right now. So you want to watch that, that uh, the voltage. Make sure that that's not dropping. Uh, also check your 120 volts. Just make sure that while there's a load on that furnace that the voltage is not dropping. So as long as you have a steady voltage going to your gas valve, uh, then the voltage is not the problem. It's just the actual output gas pressure. As well, if you have this uh, gas adjusted properly and it's actually pulsating, that could be another problem. Just make sure that you have uh, steady voltage going to it. And if it is pulsating and you have the correct spring in there, then, then that could be actually a faulty gas valve. You would also notice a problem when you're reading your combustion analysis as well, when you have a pulsating uh, flame or a incorrect pressure coming through something different than what it was actually designed for. So let's go ahead and adjust this. Okay, so you see that we're reading 3.17 presently, and if we were to turn this clockwise, we're gonna end up going up to a higher gas pressure. So right there we have 3.98. If you turn it, keep turning it clockwise, you're gonna increase the water column reading. As you decrease, the reading will end up following as well. So you want to go ahead and turn this clockwise until this ends up reaching 10 inch water column, uh, or basically while you're reading your combustion analysis, you want to make sure that you get that as accurate as possible and then set it accordingly, very close to 10 inch water column, but based on your combustion analysis. But that's how it's done. I'm not going to continue adjusting this just because this flame is actually open right now in my workshop. So most of them work where if you turn this clockwise, that will increase the gas pressure. So if you have this around 9 or 10 full revolutions downwards from the top, uh, then and you send 24 volts through and you're not getting any outlet gas pressure, then the gas valve is likely bad. You could try one more time by uh, turning this down a little bit further or in some cases, but, but not many, uh, it's reverse and you have to uh, turn it counterclockwise to increase the gas pressure, but once again, that's, that's more rare. Um, but you wanna go ahead and be able to diagnose this gas valve by reading the, the inlet pressure and the outlet pressure along with the voltage that you're sending into it, unless you can actually read the resistance of the coil itself. But even then, the solenoid could be jammed up in the inside uh, and that could be the issue. You just want to make sure that if a, if a furnace was also converted from natural gas to propane or propane back to natural gas again, that it has the correct spring, the correct orifices, the correct uh, combustion air, if there's a plate that needs to be adjusted. And if it was converted from natural gas to propane, just make sure that it does have a low pressure um, gas switch in it just for safety. If you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech. Well, we're rewarding the members there by adding extra content, such as articles, videos, and answering questions. If you're looking for the tools used in this video, such as the SDM N6, the UEI multimeter, or the UEI manometers, such as the single port or the two port, I have them all linked down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.